the Kabambe phones. That basically means that uh, we, we really need to use these types of channels that they have to reach out to them. And the question that you've asked, how then do we make them interested in insurance? One, insurance, most of the time people say it's not a very interesting discussion because mm -hmm. uh, people kind of talk about insurance as those people that collect your money, then they, they disappear. And yes. the only what happens is un until you get a claim, you'll start chasing them around. Now, how then do we make people really want to be part of the game? Because mm -hmm. the risks are there. That is a reality. Uh, people really need some form of protection. That is something that we need to think about. But there are certain things that have to be addressed. One, I think in terms of the claiming process, I think the insurance industry really needs to make the claims processing to be as easy as the way people purchase these particular products. Uh, the claim process becomes very uh, difficult. People don't, most of the time, don't understand the claim process, particularly within the insurance industry. And what we are urging the insurance companies to look at how then they kind of ease in the claims processing of these particular risks that have kind of transpired. Mm -hmm. The second element, and, and this is something that has to be also done together with other, uh, with the regulator in Kenya and, and even ac across, uh, across the world. Uh, the key thing is that we really need to start educating people the importance of insurance because insurance is a very important element uh, with the day-to-day with the -day lives that we are currently, uh, currently living. So if we, we are not going to have a way of in which maybe people do not understand what are the benefits of insurance and how easily they can access these particular products, then we'll still get to that particular point whereby people do not really get interested in insurance because education is a, a, a very important aspect. I really love the regulator in Kenya. They have been trying to do a lot of what we call bio uh, we, we are, as also FSD Africa, we've been trying to support the insurance companies and, mm -hmm. and the innovators uh, through programs such as Bima Lab to, to enable them to go to the market and talk about what insurance really entails. Mm -hmm. The last thing I think we really need to think about embedding insurance in various elements of, 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 of what we do. So for instance, you know, if somebody is going to purchase Mm -hmm. a particular product or somebody is going to purchase uh, a particular item how why are we not embedding that that is something that has really helped countries such as south africa because you'll get that south africa has a penetration of around 14 percent compared to the entire continent in africa which has only three percent yes what have they done they have kind of embedded insurance within their daily lives and their daily processes. So funeral insurance is a must uh, in, in, in South Africa. People have to basically purchase that. Compared to that, you know, as we have what we call the garden square, mm -hmm. whereby in case maybe you, f you face a particular, yes. the first insurance will be, let me go and set camp in garden square and maybe see how I can raise funds. So there's a lot of mind shift that needs to happen. The industry has to make the claims process easier. We need to educate people around insurance, but also we just need to make sure that we embed insurance mm -hmm. as part and parcel of our life, that livelihoods. Mm -hmm. Still on that point of other countries, um, I was actually about to ask you, um, since you've mentioned South Africa, let us look at outside Africa and the way they, um, they em embrace insurance. Uh, is there a difference uh, from the way we do it over here and what do we need to borrow from them in terms of trying to uh, look at insurance in a different way? Yeah, so th th there are various learnings that we, we can basically pick up. But also, uh, what, I, what I would kind of also mention is that the way we are set up, particularly culturally uh, within Africa, we have already some form of uh, what we call uh, risk uh, mitigants uh, around us. So, you know, if you have, uh, you, you, you have a, a family, you'll, you'll always know that in case anything happens to me, then the family will take care of that. And, and that is through the cultural setting. Now, mm -hmm. what we can do uh, as a continent, uh, particularly given that our cultural background kind of depicts a lot of around looking at what is standing next to me to provide assistance, is kind of now trying to formalize those informal ways of risk transfer components. Because there are different elements that we use, such as charmers. Those can easily be converted to avenues whereby we can embed insurance through our charmer systems, 
to provide us with the rightful product and to provide us with the rightful protection. So we just need to know how then we convert these informal settings into formalized settings that will provide value and enable us to become resilient as a society and, and also as a community. And that's what we need to learn from other countries whereby they have already come up with a, a clear mechanism of dealing with that. In South Africa and other countries, they have what we call cell captives, mm -hmm. whereby they group themselves into small cells, and those cells kind of enable them uh, to transfer their risk within peer-to-peer -peer type of settings. Another component that maybe we might need to think about uh, from an insurance setting is that, you know, the government really plays a very critical role, particularly on certain risks. So, for instance, in the U.S., when it comes to flooding, the government really provides the first stop when it comes to such risks such as uh, such as uh, disasters such as flooding mm -hmm. so how then can we ensure that even within our country within kenya we have what we call um a sovereign way of of, of managing certain risks is it climate can we be able to really provide uh, even subsidies mm -hmm. to our farmers uh, to address issues such as drought. I know the government has really done a lot in terms of really coming up with certain mechanisms whereby they do provide subs premium subsidies to, uh, to pastoralists uh, in northern Kenya. Uh, there's also some form of uh, uh, premium subsidies for uh, crop insurance, but we need to do more. We need to basically bring all this together in a proper government budgeting, whereby some of these risks can be addressed at a sovereign level, what, what I basically call at a macro level. So there are so many actions that mm -hmm. we need to do mm -hmm. to undertake to manage the risks that we are currently facing mm -hmm. uh, last but not least i think uh, the regulator has to also come in and and you know uh, as a private sector agency fsd africa we work uh, closely with regulators and even uh, the policy makers to look at how then what are these policies that can be put in place to catalyze the risk transfer mechanisms within within the continent. So, for instance, I know we are working with the insurance regulator towards coming up with um, some policies around uh, 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 inclus inclusive insurance because we want to basically bring everybody on board because if we left people live out of insurance, then it will mean that they'll not become only a burden to the community, but also that will be a burden to the government budgeting and the government spending. So it is important that some of these risks can be easily transferred mm -hmm. to the private sector through a proper budgeting system uh, within the country. All right, um, we've come to the end. Um, briefly, uh, 30 seconds. Just tell us uh, what is the second, uh, the insurance insurtech. When you look at it in terms of a 2023 outlook, what are we looking at? So I, I think uh, from the insurtech perspective, we are seeing uh, more catalytic funding uh, going to that particular sector because they have the silver bullet to unlock uh, the risks that most of uh, the insurance uh, sector uh, countries are facing in, in Africa. The second thing is that we really need to still support them through providing the rightful training and that is a program that we've been running as FSD Africa through BIMA Lab. Uh, we still need to provide them with the rightful regulations and I, I think we've seen the regulators really coming together to give them things such as regulatory sandboxes to take them to the next level. So the outlook is very positive. We really need to continue supporting them through funding, through technical support, but also providing the right regulations. Mm -hmm. And I think then we'll be able to close this particular protection gap that has been widening. Thank you so much, you. Um, Elias, for joining us and speaking to us about InsurTech and the Outlook 2023 and what we need to do. All right, we've come to the end of business today. My name is Kelvin Yakundi. Biwia KTN is coming up next. And also, um, um, Azmio um, One Kenya leader, Raila Odinga, is now in Kamukunji grounds. We're also going to be looking at this, um, he, the live pictures on your screens there. He has uh, gotten... Um, into Kamukunji and they'll be engaging uh, Kenyans there on the way forward when it comes to uh, the finance bill. We'll also be following up more on this and what uh, will be coming out of the consultations right there at Kamukunji grounds. Or too far.